It may be a holiday shortened week here in the U.S., but we got plenty of fundamentals. We got central banks as well as geopolitics and politics. So joining me now is Alan Valdez of Sober Bear Capital, and he'll give us insight into what we saw this week. Alan, great to have you here today. Remy, great to be here. Well, we got a couple of surprises this week on the geopolitical as well as political front. We got the extension of the uh, debt ceiling from Trump as he cooperated with the Democrats. So there are a lot of expectations as we head into this weekend. We have to keep in mind we have uh, Hurricane Irma, which is expected to make landfall here in the U.S. So what will you be watching as we head into the weekend? You know, great points. Well, the debt ceiling was a great positive for the market. You know, it was the Democrats and the White House, not even the Republicans. It was the Democrats and the White House that got together and agreed on a three-month extension. Of course, you know, Hurricane Harvey was relief fund was tied into that. So anybody that didn't sign on looks pretty poor. But now we got, like you mentioned, Hurricane Irma, which is has its sights not only on southern Florida but on Miami. Millions of people in the wave that it's devastated islands throughout the Caribbean with 180 mile an hour winds. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that. But the debt ceiling was a good sign for traders because it shows that the Democrats and the White House can work together, maybe pass some spending, maybe tax cuts, infrastructure. So it's a good sign. I don't see any of those tax cuts or infrastructures coming to 2018, though. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that timeline because there have been expectations for reform, but we are edging closer to the end of this year, so it's most likely that we won't see anything until 2018. But we can't forget about geopolitics. It seems as though we always start the week with uh, North Korea in the spotlight, and as the week wears on, we put that to uh, the back. But what do you expect to see as we go forward? You know, I, I think they're going to, you know, this, this regime is really off the rails. I think you're going to see more and more problems with them as time goes on. I don't think we're going to go to war anytime soon, but the fact that they have hydrogen bombs, they have missiles that they have already sent over our allies in Japan, I mean, that's their potential troublemaker. So we're going to keep a close eye, and, and if you know if they shoot one down, who knows where that leads. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that, but again, I don't see any real, real danger except annoying little people bothering us. Last but not least, Alan, uh, I do want to get your take on central banks. Now, we have uh, Fed speakers on tap for this week. And, of course, uh, we had the ECB meeting uh, Thursday morning. And we got no change in rates as well as no idea of when the stimulus will be unwound across uh, the ocean in the eurozone. But we did see the euro dollar pop above 120, and that rally does continue. So in terms of rate differentials, what do you expect to see on both sides of the Atlantic? You know, we were a little surprised that Draghi didn't do anything there because, you know, now the euro is, is up there and it's hurting them. It's making our dollar, our multinationals very attractive for, for our European clients and customers. Uh, I, I think they're going to get it on track. They can't have that euro go too high for them. I mean, it's fine for us, but it's not going to be too good for them, especially coming into the holiday season and things like that. It's going to be a great push for U.S. markets, though. Okay, Alan, well, thank you so much for joining me and have a great weekend. Thanks, Remy. You too.